Hello. After introducing cloud observation in so many episodes, my friends told me that they were a little bit confused. So I decided to give you a break and forget about cloud observation for a while. As they say, taking a break is for accomplishing a longer journey. So in this episode, I'll introduce another meteorological element that also requires visual observation, which is visibility. Before I introduce visibility, I'd like to share something else with you first. In weather observation, many weather elements are required to be observed, such as wind direction, wind speed, cloud conditions, rainfall, current weather conditions, etc. You, as an amateur weather observer, want to perform a weather observation and make a weather report. What should be included in your weather report? Of course, if you observe the weather just as a hobby, the report may only include cloud conditions, cloud amounts, or together with simple weather conditions and visibility. However, how should you make your observations more meaningful? You should make your observation a valuable reference. Also, I think that every weather report should have four dimensions of information. So learning how to observe the weather correctly and making your observations close to the current situation is one of the key points. Because without 4D information, your observations will become worthless. For example, you provided the following weather observations. Today is very hot, 35 degrees Celsius. There are three pieces of information in this weather report. Today, very hot, 35 degrees Celsius. First of all, no one knows what the exact day of today is. Second, very hot is subjective. It can't be a reference. Third, 35 degrees Celsius. What does 35 degrees Celsius stand for? Is it normal or abnormal? So in order to make 35 degrees Celsius more meaningful, the first feature added is 2D. That is, where was this 35 degrees Celsius measured? If this 35 degrees Celsius is measured near the equator, then it is a normal data. On the contrary, if this 35 degrees Celsius is measured close to the North Pole, it's an abnormal data. The third D is at the altitude. Do you remember when many people went to the hilltop of Taimo Shan in winter to film videos by holding thermometers and told people that it's freezing here, it's only zero degrees Celsius in Hong Kong? In fact, the temperature recorded by the Hong Kong Observatory was about six degrees Celsius. Height is the cause of the temperature difference because the temperature changes with the height. When the height increases, the temperature generally decreases. Therefore, recording zero degrees Celsius in Taimo Shan during winter isn't a difficult thing, but recording almost zero degrees Celsius in the urban area is almost a historical low. Now we have 2D, the location, and also a third dimension, height. What's the last dimension? It's time. Let's use the temperature as an example, 30 degrees Celsius. If 30 degrees Celsius is recorded in Hong Kong in August or September, it's just a typical result, not worthy of attention. But if it's measured in December or January, it may be headline news. Why am I obsessed with 4D? Because sometimes I saw friends post some photos on weather sharing websites or pages on the internet with captions like, good morning, today's weather is fine, and then nothing else. I think it's such a waste. They took the photos, made the weather observation, and described the weather condition. Why didn't they mention the time and location too, so we could take it as a reference? For example, I know the weather in Zhengguanou is fine. Simsache is raining. So I'll know there are isolated showers today. Another example, the Hong Kong Observatory stated the temperature today was 33 degrees Celsius. But it was 35 degrees Celsius in your weather report. Why? 
It turns out that your measurement was in the New Territories. It's normal that the temperature in the New Territories is 1 to 2 degrees Celsius higher. So I hope you'll remember that next time you post a photo, or make a weather observation, or issue a weather report. Please, include 4D as much as possible. Now, going back to this episode's topic, visual visibility observation. It is similar to the observation of cloud or weather. You use your bare eyes to observe it. So if you are short-sighted or long-sighted, you should wear a pair of glasses that fits you. We also need some prior preparation for visual observation, such as some landmarks. After that, the accuracy of the visual observation will depend on your experience. First, let's talk about what visibility is. Visibility is the greatest distance at which a person with normal vision can see or identify a suitable object. What is a suitable object? It's an object in dark color and within a visual angle of 0.5 to 5 degrees. First, the distance. In the past, the Hong Kong Observatory didn't have many computers. How to find the distance of landmarks? The method is to draw concentric circles at the observation site on the map to select different distances and then select suitable landmarks. Second, dark objects with a visual angle between 0.5 and 5 degrees. If you can't find any 0.5 degree visual angle, we can find the closest one. We need to use our fingers. Fully straighten the arm, then put out your little finger. The width of the little finger is about one degree of the visual width. Straighten your arm again. This time raise the index finger, middle finger and ring finger and put them all together. The resulting visual width is around 5 degrees. So for choosing landmarks, in theory, a suitable landmark should have a width greater than the little finger and less than the combined width of the other three fingers. It's like this photo. After finding a suitable landmark, find its distance from the observation location on the map. Then mark it on the photo for easy reference. When marking landmarks, there are several distances that we hope you can find suitable landmarks for reference. First at 30 kilometers, then 5 kilometers, then 1 kilometer. Why do we want landmarks in those distances? Because the resolution beyond 30 kilometers is in increments of 5 kilometers. Between 5 kilometers and 30 kilometers, we use 1 kilometer as the resolution. When visibility drops below 5 kilometers, the resolution is in increments of 100 meters. When reporting visibility, remember you should observe all 360 degree directions of the observation site and report the worst visibility among all the directions. There isn't any special skill for observing visibility. Just carefully observe which landmarks you can see. But be careful if you often make observations in the same location. Sometimes you're too familiar with certain landmarks. Even when the visibility is insufficient to see that landmark, there's an impression on your mind that the landmark is visible because you're too familiar with it. You need to be careful about this. What factors affect visibility? There are many factors, such as suspended particles, sand and dust in the air, weather phenomena such as fog, haze, etc. Rain is also one of the affecting factors. If you are at sea, splashing waves can also affect visibility. Let's start with some common weather phenomena that affect visibility in Hong Kong. First, haze. Under what circumstances would there be haze? First, when visibility is below 5 kilometers. So remember to look at landmarks as much as possible with a distance at 5 kilometers. Second, relative humidity is generally below 85%, which means dry conditions. Haze will be reported in this situation. Another phenomenon is mist. 
The visibility of mist is about 1 to 5 kilometers. It's more humid, therefore the relative humidity is higher, usually above 85%. When visibility keeps on dropping below 1 kilometer and the relative humidity still remains at a high level, that's the condition where fog appears. So remember that you must have landmarks at a distance of 1 kilometer. Lastly, precipitation. There are generally three types of precipitation in Hong Kong, drizzle, rain, and showers. Drizzle is the precipitation phenomenon that can affect visibility the most. It can reduce visibility from light drizzle to about three kilometers to very dense drizzle with visibility as low as 800 meters. Rain and showers are rather special. When the rain or shower is light, the visibility will improve instead of deteriorate. That's because there are many suspended particles, sand and dust in the air, and the rain will wash these pollutants, sand and dust away. And so visibility will improve. But when the rain gets heavier, visibility can also drop below 3 kilometers. Visibility observation is relatively easy to learn among visual observations. After watching this video, I hope you'll try to do visibility observations. See you next time!